Hello, and welcome to AFM Ready. I'm your host, Kelly Miller, Recruitment Coordinator for the School of Accounting and Finance at the University of Waterloo. And every week, we like to focus on a new topic relating to the accounting and financial management program. Today, you'll hear from two first-year AFM lecturers as they talk about their courses and what you can do to succeed in the program. Today on the show, we have AFM lecturers Garvin Blair and Hector Gomez. Thank you both for joining us today. Garvin, to start, can you tell us about your role within the SCF? So I'm a lecturer uh, here at the School of Accounting and Finance. I'm uh, I'm focused on finance because that's what I did for a living. So I'm not a pure academic, don't have the PhD, don't want a PhD. Uh, I worked in the industry in investment banking for 20 years. Uh, and came to uh, the the university um, because I love finance and uh, and very very interested in teaching students the love of finance and how it's going to change their lives going forward. And yes, it will. Wonderful. What courses do you teach in finance for the School of Accounting and Finance? First year course, which is what um, uh, people who are going to be listening to this uh, are are hearing. It's a it's a AFM one twenty one. It is your introduction to finance and all that's great about finance. And then I also teach a fourth year course, which you'll all want to take. It's AFM 477 and it's mergers and acquisitions. And that is what I did in investment banking uh, for 20 years. And what can students expect from your class? Okay, uh, I'll focus on the first year course because I think most students listening to this will, will is, that's of most of interest to them. What what you're going to get out of the first year course is an introduction to finance, as I said, and that will provide you with an understanding as to what is a stock, what is a bond, what's a stock market, why is finance and capital markets, so when I say capital markets, stock market, stock markets, bond markets what happens with governments and what they do with finance. Why is that important to our lives? Very, very important to our lives, both from a personal standpoint, in terms of how it's going to affect your life personally now and in the future, and also from a professional standpoint, because some of you, not all of you, but some of you are going to, this is going to be your introduction to finance, but for some of you, it's going to be what some of you are going to be doing for a living going forward in co-op and full-time. What kind of course is it? Is it more like a lectured style course or a problem-based case-based type course? It's a combination of both. So what we're going to do for the winter 2021 term is we're going to have a recorded class. I hate the term lecture because, and I hate the the, the term lecturer because it, it it gives this impression of someone, you know, almost like a like a voice of God's, you know, saying this is this is what the truth is, and um, uh, and and I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, so we have a recorded class that t- talks about that week's discussion. Here, here we're going to talk about stocks this week. This week we're going to talk about bonds. This week we're going to talk about what we'll call time value of money, which is you know that. You know, a dollar a year from now is not worth the dollar today. So, so we'll have a recorded class, and then, um, then we will have um, um, problems, problems to be solved for that week, which will be submitted at the end of the week. Okay. As part of the learning, we will also hold classes that individuals or groups uh, can attend. And in those classes, we will help the students out with that problem of the week. So you'll get a recorded class that teaches, I'll call it the theory of what we're trying to uh, go through. And then you'll have another class during that week that you can you, you don't have to drop into it, but you can to go through that problem that we're trying to or that series of problems that we're trying that we're, that you'll be asked to solve every week and submit at the end of uh, that week. And so by that, we're trying to teach everyone, you know, the theory that we're that we're we want to get across. So a stock market, what's a stock market? And then we'll have a series of problems uh, that we want you to to answer. So in that regards, it's a little bit of both, a little bit of a little bit of quote lecture, but also uh, teamwork and problem solving. Uh, we we don't want it just to be. Um, uh, you know, myself preaching onto the masses. This is this is what uh, you know. This is what finance is. I find that dead boring. So we want some participation 
uh, in, in the class as well through the problem solving and teamwork. And it's great that you're still able to do that even though courses have gone virtual. Yeah, and in any regard to that, we're going to have office hours. We're going to have teaching assistance available to students for uh, to reach out to. Um, you, they can reach out to uh, myself or Ken Wetzel, uh, the other um, uh, professor in, in the course, who will be able to answer questions. We don't want this for the students to be, you're on your own, in your bedroom, in your basement, and uh, and and there's no help whatsoever because I, I know these times are difficult. And so we want it to be interactive uh, and as participatory uh, as it can possibly be given given the restrictions that we have. What tips and advice would you give students to help them not only succeed within your class, but within the program in general? So. And, and this gets to a, a little bit of the, the a few of the issues I've seen with regards to uh, uh, COVID and working online. Um, the students who who are who are doing really well with it uh, are keeping up with the material. Um, if there are if there are classes to attend and they don't they don't have to attend them, they do attend them. They keep a structure. Uh, whereby they have a schedule and they say Monday at 10 a.m. I'm going to I'm going to get online and I'm and I'm going to uh, listen to that class. They keep up with the classes um, and then they reach out when uh, they have questions or problems with that week's um, topics. What we do in 121, what we do in finance is not rocket science. OK, is we're not we're not we're not splitting atoms. We're not solving cancer. So for, for students who keep up, um, have a structure that, yes, I will, I will go to that class, I will, uh, I will listen to that recorded class you know, at, at 10 a.m. on Monday. If I have a problem, I'll go do a TA, I'll, I'll go to the office hours, I'll keep up with the material. Um, those are the, you'll, you'll do fine in this class and most others. One concern I do hear from prospective students is that they decide not to take an accounting or finance course in high school, or perhaps that their high school doesn't offer those types of courses. And now they're worried that they won't have a good foundation for their first year AFM courses. But that's not the case, is it? What, what we do in finance, no, it's not It's not rocket science. It's um, the, and, 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 uh, and quite frankly, I mean, to skip to my fourth year course, um, what I often find is uh, student, students who, who have investment banking experience, who worked, have worked, say, a co-op term, um, they, of, they often don't do as well as the students who don't have investment banking experience. And you, and you might think, well, that seems strange. You know, you're teaching a fourth year course that's you know, somewhat about investment banking. What I find happens is the students who have all of four months experience in a co-op term, they get overconfident and they don't do the work. They don't perhaps come to class and they get lazy. And it's the students who basically just keep at it. They come to class. They, if they don't understand something, they ask about it. They're, uh, they're determined to get a good mark. Those are the students who do, who do well in the class. And so if you've had a little bit of exposure to finance or something like that in the past, no, it's, it's, it, it's much more about attitude and um, attitude and engagement, uh, I find more than anything else. And last question, this is the question that I love to ask all my guests. Why AFM? To, to me, that's uh, fairly simple. You're talking to you're talking to a guy, excuse the uh, uh, dog, this is part of the hazards of working from home. Um, you're talking to a guy whose undergrad is, uh, is in, uh, my, I did an undergrad in business at Laurier, and then I did I, my MBA at Ivy. And so, Asking me why AFM of Waterloo, you might go, oh, you should go to Laurier, you should go to Ivy. No, no. I, look, look I, I don't have to answer that question. Look at what our grads have done um, or our co-op students have done. I can put on one, maybe I, maybe I have to put it on two pages now. All of the firms that are under uh, our AFM graduates are working at, and it's all of the Wall Street firms. It's all of the Bay Street firms. And I would argue that if you are a student who really wants to get ahead and say who wants to work on Bay Street in capital markets, you can 
you can very well do it through the AFM program and have a fantastic career um, by getting involved with all of the different finance initiatives that we have in at, at AFM, doing well in your courses, um, being engaged. In, and I say that with certainty because students going before you who are listening out there have done it time and time again. I think it's a fantastic program. Um, and and our, alum, our alumni have, uh, have proven that out. It's, it's, uh, and it's, it's something, quite frankly, that surprised me a little bit since I got here, what, five, six years ago, because I was I was, you know, I'm the um, I'm the Ivy MBA guy like, you know, hey, you know, Ivy's uh, Ivy's top of the world. It's fantastic. You know, no, I'll put our top students against the Ivy top students, anyone's top students any day. Love it here. Thanks, Garvin. Now, Hector, can you tell us about your role within the SCF? Uh, yeah, for sure. So my role in the is uh, I am a lecturer um, at the School of Accounting and Finance, and I teach in both the undergrad and the graduate uh, program. Uh, school. And I've been teaching since 2015 um, different courses uh, in the undergrad uh, program, which is uh, where I started teaching uh, mostly uh, first and second year courses around managerial accounting and decision making. And um, in the last few years, I've also started teaching in the Masters of Accounting program. And I became a coach coaching um, Masters of Accounting students through their uh, big project that they have to do before they uh, actually get certified as CPAs. Now, you actually have an interesting background in that you were an AFM student not too long ago. Can you tell me about your journey from being an AFM student to now teaching AFM courses? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's pretty crazy that I am in this position. I never would have thought as a student that I would end up being on the other side, but uh, it's been an amazing uh, opportunity, amazing journey for me. Um, so I, I graduated from the AFM and the Masters of Accounting program I finished in at the end of 2011 and I uh, graduated officially in 2012 and I started um, I continued to uh, be very involved in the program uh, even after graduation helping different professors uh, with their courses as a as a teacher assistant um, after I finished uh, the, the program and I had a very unique opportunity in 2015 to create my own course. It was a second year course to help students um, prepare students that were interested in doing their first co-op term in, in an industry sort of job as a financial analyst to help them prepare and have the skills that they need uh, to be ready for their first co-op term. So I started that course in uh, 2015 and the rest has been history. I've just loved it so much that I continue to uh, take on more and more uh, courses and I've been working full time uh, as well. So it's been a very busy few years, um, but I recently left my full time job and now I am teaching on the most part, but also doing a little bit of consulting. Fantastic. Well, we are so happy to have you with us on staff. Um, mm, can you, you tell us what your courses are? Can you kind of describe what each course is that you teach? Yeah, so I am currently teaching um, course, a first year course. It's called Introduction to Managerial Accounting. So uh, this course really provides first year students with the core knowledge uh, that they uh, need for uh, upper year uh, courses. Um, so it provides the foundation of managerial accounting and decision making that students will, will need to be successful throughout the program. So I've been teaching this course uh, for about three years now. And uh, in, last, in 2019, um, I created an online version of this course. It was about a one year project. So now uh, there is uh, an online version of this course available and that's what we've been using uh, to, uh, to actually teach during uh, this COVID pandemic. And I also teach AFM uh, 212, which is a second year course. 
And this course is called Financial Analysis and Planning. And in this course, we are, um, I'm teaching with two other uh, faculty members and we are helping students make connections between all their first year courses or a lot of their first year courses to make connections and connect the dots in a way um, from an accounting perspective, strategy perspective, and overall uh, business, understanding the business perspective um, to help students become what we call GFAs or great financial analysts. Are the mm. courses that you teach more lectured style or are they more problem-based, case-based type courses? Um, overall, my teaching style is more problem-based and case-based. Um, for the first year course that I mentioned, Introduction to Material Accounting, uh, it is more on the lecture style uh, side, just because this is a core knowledge course and really you're introducing students to a lot of concepts uh, in first year. But um, I, I do have uh, problems in many cases to make sure that students have the opportunity to practice and apply their knowledge um, using like real world examples. So coming from uh, industry myself, I spent uh, five years working at TELUS in financial uh, analysis and planning. And I worked at Madame Homes um, as again, in the similar uh, field in financial reporting and financial analysis. Um, I, I definitely appreciate, and I think students enjoy learning from real world examples or many cases. And in my second year course, uh, which I, I'm teaching with two other faculty, this one is a full, fully case-based course. So once students have uh, all the basic standards in first year, um, this is the first heavy uh, case-based course that uh, students complete in their AFM uh, curriculum. Um, and it is, it is a challenging course, but it's also a course that provides a lot of opportunities to really apply uh, their knowledge and think critically, right? Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure our students uh, not only have the core knowledge, but they also are building the critical problem finding and problem solving uh, capabilities uh, that makes them successful uh, in, in everything that they do. And how would you say courses differ from being like a high school course to a university course? Yeah, I think the main uh, difference that I found at least from what I can recall at least um, is that university courses have significantly more content. That's definitely a big difference. So it was a big adjustment to go from um, courses that aren't as heavy on content uh, to going to university where you're learning uh, a lot <laughs> every single week. So it is a lot. So I feel like the number one thing to succeed is to stay on top of your work as a university student. And more than anything, um, I, I think as I went through my own uh, journey as a student, um, I, I understood that to be successful, and to really reach my highest potential as a student, I had to, my number one skill to master was uh, organizing my time and prior, prioritize properly. Um, and another key difference is that university courses do provide more opportunities to really build that critical thinking uh, skills uh, that are very important um, as you are a student. And obviously when you are out in the real world and uh, working in co-ops and working as full-time analysts, you need to develop those critical thinking skills, not just to, I guess, memorize an approach and apply that approach uh, no matter what the circumstances, but really um, we teach an approach to take a look, understand the context and what's going on um, in any circumstance or any case, and then to be able to adapt and, and come up with a, a, an appropriate approach to actually solve problems. The great thing is that, uh, yes, you're being challenged and, and, and a lot of times you're, you're feeling like you're being pushed out outside your comfort zone. But um, what I valued uh, a lot as I went through the program 
is that you're learning in such a supportive uh, environment um, from not faculty, not only faculty, but also uh, all your peers are, are, are going through the same experience and, and going through the same, um, I guess, the same learning curve uh, as yourself. So uh, it is a very, very supportive environment where you can learn a lot from everyone around you. And I think that's really important to touch on because I think another fear that some prospective students have are that the classes can be so large in some circumstances that they feel like they may just be a number. But mm -hmm. I think our faculty with AFM are very conscious of that and they try to make sure that everybody has that personal connection with faculty mm -hmm. members. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, I mean, in some, in some cases, yes, there are some large uh, classes, but um, as you go through the program, classes get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller um, to the point that when I teach in the master's program, uh, the, the cap uh, to any class is 50 students. So you are really, really, uh, as, as, as the program becomes a little bit more uh, complicated and, and you are uh, getting more advanced in your learning, um, there are definitely more opportunities. But no, there's a ton of resources. Obviously, your professors are always available. Like I make myself available, uh, provide flexibility, even in a virtual environment to uh, talk to students and have virtual office hours and make sure that I am there to help and support uh, my students through the learning experience. But there's also a ton of, of other resources and tutoring and, um, and different uh, activities and, and, and groups uh, around, around campus that really make your experience um, easier and more memorable. Perfect. Well, last question. This is a question that I like to ask all my guests. And again, mm. you're in the unique situation that you were once a student and now you're teaching with us. Um, mm. Why AFM? Yeah, I would say as an AFM grad myself, um, my education at the University of Waterloo has provided me with the necessary skills to be the best um, at my job. So I have been um, able to do a lot throughout my career. So I've worked in all different areas of accounting and finance. So I started in financial reporting, um, made my way to financial planning. Uh, I've worked in uh, business analytics, and I've also spent some time in mergers and acquisitions where um, basically teams, teams that are uh, in, involved in mergers and acquisitions they're responsible for making recommendations to senior leaders in different companies um, around should we purchase companies, um, should we buy different companies. So I've been able to basically have uh, opportunities all across accounting and finance fields. Um, so I feel like it has prepared me uh, very, very well to do that and also uh, prepared me very, very well to give back and, and now teach uh, what I've learned. So it's, it's been a very rewarding experience overall. Thanks for listening to our AFM Ready podcast. For more information about the AFM program, you can go to our website at uwaterloo.ca slash SAF, or you can always check out our AFM Ready website, where you can chat with current students, read student experience blogs, watch tons of videos, plus so much more. All you need to do is click the link in the description box. Until next time.